Okay, today we're gonna to talk about removing supports from models, specifically 3D resin printed uh, miniature figures like these ones. This is a Cockatrice, this is a Grick from Dungeons and Dragons, this is a Knoll. Um, I believe they're all, uh, all these were 3D modeled by Miguel Zavala. Uh, you should definitely follow him on uh, YouTube and on Instagram and subscribe to his Patreon because he makes hundreds, no, thousands of free STL files of uh, miniature figures. He's made one of every single creature and character in Dungeons and Dragons, and he releases them online for free. You can you can download as many as you want for free, use them for free. Uh, he's a he's a great artist and a super nice guy. You should definitely check him out. That being said, uh, to remove these supports, what I first did when I first got my 3D printer is I got them off the build plate, I cleaned them off, you know, in the whatever rudimentary way I was cleaning them. Then I would get blue nippers, you know, the ones that come with like every 3D printer, FDM, or resin that you probably ever own, and I would go in. And one by one, I would snip every one of these supports. Uh, it would take forever. I wasn't highly accurate. I would break stuff off. I would leave pock marks. I would leave nubs. I would do all kinds of crazy stuff. Uh, look at this. This is I showed this in another video. This is a cockatrice. It's a magical rooster chicken. It's like a basilisk, basilisk that turns you to stone if you start it. There's it's covered in supports. So like like I said in a previous video, you'd have to be like it'd be like diffusing a, you know a, a bomb in Mission Impossible, cutting all the wires without you know crossing them just to get this off. It'd be, you know, I don't know, an hour of work, if not more, I and mean, you'd just probably still destroy the model. But when the, when your models come off and they're, you know, off the uh, printer and they're room temperature and you're cleaning them, they're room temperature, it's very hard. They're pretty robust. They're on there pretty well. These are medium supports and Lichy Slicer. They're on there pretty well because they have to hold this thing to the build plate so you don't fall off and get a failure, right? So the secret is, you don't, you don't want to do this. You don't want to clean them when they're, um, when they're when they're room temperature what you want to do is clean your models using a technique that uses warm liquid to heat them up you can either use warm you know water warm uh mean green mr clean cleaning fluid uh warm uh rubbing alcohol or you know iso uh, ipa if you're if you're super careful because that stuff is flammable and kind of dangerous to say the least, but this, these are um, these are the minis that we're cleaning for five minutes in my ultrasonic cleaner at 50 degrees Celsius, which is about 120 degrees Fahrenheit. And look at this, while taking it out of the container, they're already coming off. Look, oh wow, look, oh, they're, oh, they're gone. Oh, geez, Louise. And hold on, wait for it, wait for it. And I'm done. All those supports were just taken off in like three seconds. There's one little support here in the front. I don't even use it for his chin. Uh, I don't even use nippers for that. I'll get a pair of pliers and I'll grab it in the middle. I'll just gently wiggle and yank it off. If I can line it up, there we go. And that's all better. There's a little tiny, little extra piece of the sports cigar and it's gone. I just cleaned this mini in, you know, under 10 seconds when my initial way of cleaning them would probably would have taken like five or 10 minutes per model. Look, I picked this brick up to show you and all but one support fell, melted right off of it, just like, you know, as I say, just like peeling shrimp, if you've ever peeled shrimp, um, or eaten shrimp at a restaurant, or you know, shoplifted in the supermarket. I don't know, whatever you do with shrimp. But uh, look, at this is this is the cockatrice that would be impossible. I'm putting my thumbs in the, in the base and just kind of peeling back. And magically, da, 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 like the phoenix, the cockatrice rises. And look at all that detail. Look at all, look at all the little flanges and everything that are on him because they're all supported and they're perfect. And it's, not, it's a small model, it's a tiny little model. Uh, but yeah. You want to heat up. You want to heat up your prints. You want to. You want to. You want to uh, take your sports off from heated stuff. So whether you're using, um, like I said, I use Mean Green. You can use water, a water bath. You can use whatever. But figure out a way that you can use it where the where you're using a container that is heat up, reheatable and reusable. So you're not like making all this toxic fluid that you're gonna have to deal with. That's why I highly re recommend a ultrasonic heater, one that comes with a heating option, because you can heat up your vat. Uh, again, most of the time you want to fill it with water and either do plastic bags of the stuff you're cleaning, either it's mean green or um, you know rubbing alcohol. You want to heat up a plastic bag full of rubbing alcohol. Or I have a vat of mean green that I use. I heat up the mean green, drop it in, then I use a, the final cleaning. Sometimes I either do spray with an IPA and, and a toothbrush, or if it's something that's complicated or a pain in the butt or I have a lot, I'll put it in a plastic bag or a Mylar bag of IPA and put it floating inside the mean green that's heated. And like I said, these supports melt right off. So the secret is, Heat your stuff up. Uh, I'm using, you know, Soraya Tech Fast Gray with a little bit of Tenacious mixed in. I heat it to 50 degrees Celsius, let it sit for five minutes, and I guess the things you just saw, they melt right off. So heat your prints and you will take the supports off with, you know, with the, with as, as easy as, as can be. You've, you've seen it here in a video. Um, 
if you have a more complex model, you might have to do a little bit of nipping, but it's very rare and it's going to be, you know, several to a few to several supports versus, you know, 8,000 supports that you're trying to do Mission Impossible on.